Hi scientists, welcome back. Now that you have your own samples of the different kinds of paper, can you match up the samples that you have with what I have here? I know they look a little different because I took them from things around my house. Can you figure out which of your samples is which? See if you can do that. Today for our, our lesson today, our focus question is, what makes paper good for writing? What makes paper easy to fold? To do this experiment, we're going to be investigating writing on and folding paper, but we're going to use just a few different samples. So we're not going to be using the facial tissue or the craft paper or the construction paper or the corrugated cardboard. You can put those aside you're going to just get those six different samples, the wax paper, the tag board, the paper towel, the newsprint, the, cor the uh, chip board, and the corrugated paper. Okay, the, others, the other materials you're going to need, you're going to need a pencil, you're going to need a crayon, and you're going to need a marker. So our challenge is to find paper that is good to write on. The way we're going to do it, we're going to compare the tag board and the paper towel. So pull out your tag board and your paper towel first. Now, take your pencil and make a mark on your tag board and make a mark on your paper towel. Then try it with the crayon. Make a mark on the tag board and a mark on the paper towel. And now we're testing it with the marker. Go ahead and put a mark on your tag board and on your paper towel. Take a look at the tag board. If we turn it over, we don't see any of the marks. It didn't go through the tag board. The tag board is thick enough to support the pencil and the crayon and the marker. Let's look at the paper towel. Let's turn it over. Look at the back of the paper towel. The marker soaked right through the paper towel to the other side. Do you see? Why do you think it was easier to write on the tag board? Maybe because it's smoother. Look, the paper towel is bumpy. But maybe also because the, paper, the tag board is thicker. Let's compare the wax paper and the chipboard. So take your pencil and make a mark on your waxed paper. And then make a mark on your chipboard. Then take the crayon and make a mark on the wax paper and a mark on the chipboard. And then take your marker, make a mark on the wax paper and a mark on your chipboard. Well, the marker, the, the pencil and the crayon didn't even make a mark. And the marker, look at this, it, it smears and wipes off a little bit easily on from the wax paper. The chipboard was very much like the tag board. It was easy to make the mark. The chipboard and the tag board actually feel like the same weight. They're both heavy papers and they're both very smooth. And once again, the marker did not come through on the chipboard. If you turn over the wax paper, it's so see-through, you can see the marker line through. It's, it's really kind of see-through. You can see right through the paper. Now, let's try again with the newsprint and the corrugated paper. Go ahead and take your pencil and make a mark on your newsprint and on your corrugated paper. Take your, pe your crayon, make a mark on the newsprint and make a mark on the corrugated paper. Take your marker, make a mark on the newsprint and on the corrugated paper. If you look on the back of the newsprint, you can see, it's hard to see, the marker bled through. If you look on the back of the newsprint, you can see that the marker soaked through a little bit. 
See, right under that B there, you can see pieces in the marker. Newsprint is very thin. The marker is able to soak through. If you look at the corrugated paper, it is thick enough that it did not soak through. It was very hard to make that mark on the corrugated paper. Why do you think? I think maybe it was so bumpy, it was hard to make the mark. So taking our six pieces of paper, I'm going to see about which were the easiest to write on. Let's make them into piles. I'm going to say the easiest ones to write on were these. The hardest to write on was definitely the corrugated paper for me, and then probably the wax paper. So probably we'd put them in order like this. I would put them like this. You decide how you felt. So these were the easiest, the next easiest, and then the hardest was here. What do you think made it easy to write on the chipboard and the newsprint and the tag board? What made that easy to do? A smooth surface, do you see the smooth surface? This does not have a smooth surface. This, the wax keeps it from having a, a good surface to write on in here, that bumpiness makes it hard to write. What do you think? We have a paper that we're going to fill out, Investigation 2.2. Focus question, what makes paper good for writing? What makes paper easy to fold? Here you would write today's date. And it says, today we investigated different kinds of paper to see which paper is best to write on and which is the easiest to fold. Write your observations below. The best paper to write on is, you take what you think is your best and say why you think it is the best. If you have a sample other than the one I gave you because you're going to need that sample for another experiment. If you have a sample of that particular paper in your house, you can glue it on. If you don't have a sample, you can just draw a picture. The next part of the experiment is folding. So the way we're going to do it we're going to fold them in half. Folding the newspaper, folding the chipboard, folding the tag board, folding the paper towel, folding the construction paper, folding the facial tissue, folding the craft paper, ugh, folding the corrugated cardboard, folding the wax paper, and folding the corrugated paper. Which did you find easiest? Now try to fold it again and again. Fold, fold, until you can't fold it anymore. How many times are you able to fold each piece? Well, I can fold the newspaper many, many times until it becomes very tiny. How about the the chipboard. Once I fold it over twice, I can't really fold it again. What about the tag board? It's very hard to fold a bunch of times. But what about the paper towel? I can keep folding the paper towel also till it's very small. What about the construction paper? Fold each sample and see how much you can fold each. Once you get to the corrugated cardboard, I folded it once and then I really am having trouble folding it again. So when I get to my paper and it says the best paper to fold is, you come up with your answer and write why you think that is the case. And if you have a sample of that kind of paper at home, you can glue it on, otherwise you can draw it. And when you are done with that, you're going to take your science notebook, open to the next clean page, glue it in sideways like this so that you can actually fold the paper and close your book. The other thing I wanna call your attention to is the folded paper. If you open the paper back up, how does it look? Can you still see the folds? Look with the, even the newspaper, when we open it up, do we see 
all the folds in it, you can kind of see it looks wrinkled, just like our wrinkled heart when we did that. You see what you find when you do your folding. Let's talk about some of the things we learned. Why do you think that someone might want to fold a paper? What could you make with folded paper? Now we're going to sort. Again, maybe you can put them in a row from easiest to fold to hardest to fold, and you can make them, you can put them into groups that were easy, maybe a little less easy, and very hard to fold. So we're going to go over a little bit of the vocabulary. Let's go back to when we wrote on the paper. When ink soaks into the paper, we say the paper absorbs the ink. Remember we used that word absorbs when we were talking about the wood and how the wood absorbs water? Same word. To absorb means to soak up. And the paper towel soaked up the ink it absorbed it. When there are little hills on paper, like on this paper towel or on the corrugated paper, we say the paper is bumpy. Paper that is waxy and doesn't absorb very well is called slick. When we have a rip in paper, we call it a tear. The line made by folding paper, this line, when you open it up, we call this line a crease. When you fold paper in the middle so that the two ends line up, we say we folded the paper in half. The two edges of the sheet of paper, the two edges meet at a corner. It is hard to fold paper that is thick. It is easy to fold paper that is thin. So now we've answered our focus question. What makes paper good for writing? What makes paper easy to fold? Paper that is smooth is good for writing. Paper that is thin is easy to fold. I hope you have had a good time experimenting with paper today. Keep your paper safe for the next time we do science, we are going to need our paper samples. Have a wonderful day.